Hello everyone and welcome to another Ask IoT video series episode presented by IoT for All. I'm Ryan Chacon and on today's episode we are going to talk about the importance of real-time analytics in the supply chain. And with me is Zuzana Stamarowska, the CEO of Pathway.com. They are a data processing framework and real-time analytics engine to help take care of streaming data updates for companies. Um, very good conversation here. I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, like this video, give it a thumbs up, and hit that bell icon so you get the latest episodes as soon as they are out. All right, other than that, let's get on to the episode. Welcome, Susanna. Thank you so much for being back and taking time to chat with our audience again. Hi, Ryan. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, let's kick this off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself and the company for our audience who may be unfamiliar. Sure. So I'm Susanna Stamirovska. I'm the CEO of Pathway. Um, Pathway is a programming framework that automatically takes care of data updates uh, and streaming architectures. That means that uh, we help people, developers, design data products that uh, enable real-time machine learning and reactive design. Um, and this is this is use our first use cases are in supply chain uh, and logistics, and I believe this is a topic of today. Um, yeah. My background, yeah. <laughs> Um, my background is, in fact, uh, well, in business and research. I have a PhD on forecasting of maritime trade. I am the author of the state of the art model for forecasting of maritime trade. Um, hence, I have a good overview of what's happening in logistics and what can be made differently, perhaps, with, with newer technologies. Fantastic. Well, yeah, I'm very excited for you to be here. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right into the topic we wanted to talk about. I'm going to shift our view here for a second. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is how are analytics being used in the supply chain? And if you could talk through some some key use cases, leading use cases, things that really can kind of bring it full circle for for our audience. Of course. Um, so there are there are some things that are, you know, we're talking about supply chains and these things are pretty much down to earth. We've all experienced issues with supply chains during COVID, uh, during the blockage of the Suez Canal. Um, so the things that we, all, or lo like logistics companies, and we're mostly uh, focused on supply chains, are our availability of products. So this is one actually being able to answer the demand, because right. you know if you, if you go to IKEA, you don't get screws for for the shelves that you wanna yep. put on your on your wall. I mean, it doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. um, second is lead time. So being able to transport to make sure that supply chain is swift and then and it actually, you know, things are transported very quickly. So um, the key use case for analytics and supply chains is just reducing lead time. Anything can do to reduce lead time. This is like fantastic. Right. Um, and the first, I think, major, major thing is like reducing transport costs. So okay. you want to you want to you want to be able to transport things quickly. Uh, but also you want to optimize the costs. And this can be costs like reoperation costs in, in terms of how much you pay uh, just for transport, but this can also be environmental cost. So here we're talking about um, about environmental footprints, CO2 yep. emissions, et cetera. Sure. I'd say it's are the main things. Well, the others are uh, ensuring also that the cargo arrives in the best conditions, like in best shape. And this is very, very important for pharma pharmaceutical uh, products. Great. Uh, and when we're thinking about the space in general, what are um, where do you feel like the biggest challenges kind of lie when it comes to the supply chain industry? Well, there's a number of, of them. I'd say that very, very tricky thing is making use of data in aggregation and being able to respond uh respond to anomalies respond to uh things that we didn't didn't think would happen i mean this is what we've experienced right right um there was like a normal but even defining what normal is, this is like one question people had their ideas for 30 years and all of a sudden mm -hmm. everything changed so defining what is normal what's a new normal uh when when things happen and then be be able to see how this is going to evolve and actually how we should adapt and this these decisions have to happen very quickly because otherwise we have production lines that are stopped, you know, because there are some missing missing pieces, uh, which may be tiny, but in the end you can't put together um, some, some some equipment, like BMW had to stop their, their production for, I actually stopped putting screens into the cars because they didn't have, uh, they were, they were, there was a chip shortage. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd say this is it. I mean, and 
from what I could see actually when I when I was working like before in research and and, and then in pathways that there was this like key piece of uh, of data processing of software infrastructure that would enable uh, enable these companies to draw value from the data quickly. In fact, so having analytics is not so easy if uh, if if you want to be able to react on the spot, and this this, this even touches like computing uh, right. computing elements. Fantastic. And I wanted to ask you, just, just so kind of thinking about what you've been saying, as we bring in more tools and technology into the supply chain, and if, you know, to ways to manage um, uh, or manage the supply chain in general, how are humans still kind of staying in the loop and playing a role and being involved? Or how has it kind of shifted and changed their role as well? This is a wonderful question. Um, in fact, what, what we've seen uh, in supply chains is that a lot of knowledge right now is in people's heads and this knowledge is wonderful I mean, they the people in supply chains I and mean, they manage such complex problems i mean we actually like from computer scientists would know that they're mp hard and they're being you know solved every day by those people who who sit in the offices and 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 orchestrate international trade flows um so those people in fact know what's really happening in the field right. um you know they know the real constraints um, they know, you know some some usual tweaks that that you need to do in order for the uh, for, for for the operations to work. Uh, so from what we've seen, like it's very important to keep them in the loop. So have technology, have let's say AI, have uh, have have different solutions that will help them. That would suggest things. It would be more like decision support tools uh, rather than having them uh, replace replace them. So it's it's very important to be able to 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 actually just get this the knowledge like expert knowledge from those people rather than imposing some optimal uh, but maybe artificial artificial plans on them and then it's very important to let them uh, interact with the systems you know put corrections uh, sure, sure. feed in whatever they, they they want to put into the system so some things that we've seen actually uh, is that you know. You may want to tell that there is an ETA for a ship, uh, but the person in the like on uh, in the shipping line may already know that. While well, he had the call with the captain, he knew that this ship, you know, that that the ETA is going to be different. Right. So in this case, it would be interesting for him to be able to enter the ETA that he knows it will be more more precise thanks to his inter like private knowledge. Let's say mm -hmm. um, it would be important to, for him to be able to put this into the system and then this to be taken into account. Uh, and the like recalculations of all the planning, you know, because ETA is one of the right. of the of the key elements that allows you then to orchestrate all the rest of the flows after the ship hits the port. Okay. So, um, well, humans, it's like first ad adoption. I'd say is for adoption, it's extremely important to have in the loop. Then everything is so complex. In fact, uh, just formalizing all the constraints is impossible. I mean, sure, I sure. see I see every day having you know couriers. That deliver packages to my to my place and it's funny uh because i know these companies are our clients you know <laughs> so i sometimes talk to the couriers themselves asking how they sure. do things right and they tell me oh you know i'll just write i'll just write on the piece of paper the number of your package and i'll enter this into the system later on <laughs> uh because i yeah. had some plan but this plan in fact didn't make sense because the two houses are next to each other so i prefer okay. to deliver you right now uh and this is yes Clearly an adoption issue, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. That's fine. Um, so uh, actually, we, you, they, they do optimization uh, in the field with, with things that they, they know are good. Uh, okay. So there is, when we're talking about couriers, uh, you may have, like, it, there's a steep learning curve for couriers. And right now, the boom of e-commerce, and like, we do send more and more packages. So, so, so this, this is only going to grow. Yeah. Um, and, and onboarding takes months okay for you courier to learn how to deliver in like in a given area it really takes a lot of time because there, there's a lot of know-how and like where yeah. to park at what hour you know and right, what, right. what order to visit which houses and then uh well, amazon is pretty good in fact at just giving them small uh i'll call it bags of of how they uh of of, of like packages that go together and they decide the order okay um but not everybody does that um so so there's a lot a lot to do and i'd say a lot to learn 
from the people mm. who've done it and who already know the zones in which they, they, they have to deliver. And I believe that with, with technologies, with IoT especially, yeah, right. uh, we can extract this knowledge from the people and then uh, and then see, for example, you know, the best delivery patterns uh, mm. directly directly from you know, how their colleagues have, have been doing it. And it's also yeah. easier to adopt something that, you know, uh, that comes from a human and not something that was calculated by a fancy yeah. algorithm yeah. somewhere and that didn't take into account constraints such as sure. uh, the fact that you can't park in a certain location and <laughs> the system was wrong. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and, and one other thing I wanted to ask you too, um, as we're talking about the analytics it, as it relates to supply chain is the real-time element of it and kind of the importance of real-time analytics in the supply chain. Um, can you tell me just kind of at a high level the importance of that real time element and any challenges that kind of come up when we're when you're when you're dealing with real time? Of course. Uh, so in real time, real time in supply chains is slightly different than real time in you know, usual streaming. Uh, things that very often you want to be able to mix real time and enrich it with, uh, with with things that come from from historical data. Uh, and then you, you will also get events. So I mean, you will get data points that will arrive at some like messed up order because, uh, well, I know the, the connection didn't work exactly well sure, sure. Uh, or something strange happened. And in fact, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty hard to, to make sure that, um, that, that everything is up to date and to put like real time and, and historical data together. Uh, then, then the other uh, the other issue that you may have is, is the ability to make decisions and interpret the data. Assuming you may need to change your interpretation with the new data point that arrives, because imagine you have I have information about the state of a given container. Sure. Everything was going fine. It was going fine, but then with a delay, only with a delay, you get information gotcha. um, you know, the fact that I know something weird happened to temperature. And then you are, then you may have conflicts in, the, in different, like between different data sources. Then you will need to actually go go back in history, like, and say, okay, in fact, this one like had had an anomaly, and this may have uh, an impact on how you interpreted events that um, that that were following the one the, the one in the past. Uh, so it, it's super tricky to actually be able to know. Okay, I learned something new, so I changed the interpretation of of, of mm -hmm. the thing I I, I I I saw in the past, and then I adapt accordingly so then gotcha. you know decision making will also depend on, on the fact that well all of a sudden something was in a, like anomalous state now we know right. that so what do you do gotcha fantastic uh, no. so no go ahead now for the for the cases like where real time matters a lot um i'd say it's of course for like anything that concerns anomalies but this is also asset management uh, when you when you when you want to make sure that you use your fleet to like uh, like to do that to, to the highest extent, okay. Uh, ETAs, of course. I mean, so knowing knowing sure. when things are going to arrive, so actually orchestrating supply chain. Yeah. Uh, this this also allows you to have you know more um, more precision and and how you can answer demand in the end. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this is key. Uh, well, of course, when we the the more delicate the products are that we're dealing with, the, the more important real time becomes. So sure. drugs, drugs are a perfect example because yep. you may want to spot that something is going to uh, to be broken, you know, before it actually breaks. Uh, right. so if, you, if you don't get your vaccines or your drugs uh, on time and good shape in certain locations, I mean, you may, you may pay penalties um, that are actually regulatory or and then there is just a you know, social cost that's behind because drugs important, were not there. Course. Fantastic. Uh, last thing I want to ask you before I let you go here is, is now that we've kind of covered from the how analytics are being used in the supply chain, how it's influencing humans, how what are the biggest challenges and so forth. Where where do we go from here as an industry? Like what what's where do you see the future of analytics as it relates to providing value to the supply chain? That may relate to challenges that are that come up that are we you know we're not expecting, but. Just kind of from your standpoint, what's most exciting to be thinking about as we look into the future for um, for the supply chain, when it, as it relates to how analytics are being used? Of course, I think it's, it's it's extremely interesting to see a certain integration of analytics and seeing it, you know, like being using and like in like big supply chain companies or logistics companies and like across different departments. 
Sure. So it's it's having having this data feed in, not, not being siloed anymore. I mean, this is a trend that we see already, but it's 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 only it's going to accelerate. Being able to see um, to see data from, for example, I use you know, tracking of containers and tracking of different assets uh, used, of course, by like people in operations. It's right. also used directly by account managers. Uh, but using this as well for uh, for CO two monitoring and and optimization. So then, then we're talking to different people. Then this being used for insurance and uh, and elsewhere. So in fact, it's something that I'm very excited about, and I hope it's gonna. I mean, I think it's gonna develop early seed with clients, but it's an awareness that it's uh, is is growing right now. It's really this uh, cross functional view. Okay. Rather than thinking just you know case by case, like one division by division, um, and in fact that's true. It, it it was hard in the past to do it because each use case required like a pretty expensive data science project, you know, to get to a result that maybe that right, wasn't always right. the best and was was hard to put in production. But having data products that are um, they're flexible enough to support different business use cases, like from this like one type of data or one like one one data model. Um, something I'm, I'm I'm very excited about, and I I really believe it's going to be a game changer uh, okay. for, for for also the speed of 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 getting volume. Right, right. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a very exciting space to kind of follow along. I mean, we've obviously all as, as individuals been. Uh, um, dealing with the supply chain and changes to it and challenges with it just on a consumer level. So understanding kind of what's going on behind the scenes to help improve and make this a, better for everyone, I think is, is um, very important for people to pay attention to. Um, for our audience who wants to learn more about kind of what you all have going on, maybe follow up with questions about this topic or anything related to that, what's the best way they can do it? Sure. I mean, please just write to us at contact uh, at pathway.com. Uh, we also just actually pathway pathway as a dev tool is open our website you can you can join us on discord um and like me and my colleagues are there so we can chat and even you know great. jump jump on the call at any time so Sounds it would good. be great to connect absolutely well we really appreciate your time thank you so much for being here um and look forward to hopefully having you back and talking about uh more things going on as, as you know always always a pleasure to have you <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, this is very great to be here and I'm looking forward to, to more discussions. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the Ask IoT video series. I hope you found a lot of value in it. If you did, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps others find it and make sure that you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, if you have any questions or topics that you would like us to cover in this series, please leave them in the comments or shoot us an email at hello at iotforall.com. Other than that, thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time.